Hello, this is Brother Kevin, and uh, I just want to say it's great to be back after a long layoff. And um, this is the, the home that the Lord provided for us, and <laughs> such a it's such a miracle. And um, we don't even know it just happened so fast, but we are grateful. Um, I haven't been homeless with my family yet. And I thank God that it didn't have to be. He took care of everything. And I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. But to those of you who have continued to pray, pray for us, I want to say thank you. And I want you to know that there will be some uh, changes, as you've probably noticed, that we've been doing different sermons from other sources, like my pastor and some other friends. And uh, uh, we'll be doing interviews more. We're just going to let the body of Christ minister a little more. Um, instead of just hearing, you know, my little sermonettes, um, which I will continue to do, and I'm going to break into a new series today. Uh, but before I do that, I want you to know that uh, we're going into a new phase now. So if you see some other faces, uh, don't be surprised, because the Lord has really, really been dealing with my heart about allowing the body of Christ to minister. And some of these people are not necessarily all veterans uh, like myself, some of these people will be newer believers. If they have a word, they have a testimony, because Jesus still changes lives, that's for sure. But anyway, as I said before, I'm here in my home. This is my uh, younger brother, Kelly. We were kind of stair steps. We walked together for uh, many, many years together. Um, we have uh, gone, walked through these trials as a family together uh, in, in our homes or our various locations. But um, I am so grateful for what the Lord has done and, uh, and always grateful for people who do the invisible work of prayer because while it's invisible, it is not invisible. Trust me, it's not invisible at all. However, I want to start a new series and in that series I want to talk about uh, something that uh, was very easy to get on the wrong side of. However, I think it's good. Um, Jesus says, be perfect as your Father in Heaven is perfect. And uh, when we hear that word, just legalism bells go off in our head. You know, it's like do's and don'ts and, or the rebuttal, nobody's perfect. I mean, how many times have you heard that? But Jesus says, be ye perfect. Well, that word perfect certainly could mean mature and certainly could mean mature, uh, complete, uh, or whole, but what, however you want to look at it, Jesus wants us to be the best he's called us to be. Not the best you can be, the best he has called you to be. Now that's a big difference. So you have to look at first, the first thing you have to look at in being perfect, okay, you have to look at the context of the one who said that statement. Jesus was uh, the son of God, and Jesus wouldn't be stretching it. But you see, Jesus provided through Calvary and his resurrection a new heart and a new spirit. But if you have a new heart and a new spirit, then you have an attitude, heart change. Now God can bring a maturing process into you or a perfection or a completion project uh, process in you, which he tends on completing. As the scripture says, he that started the good work in me or you shall complete it unto the day of Christ. So the Lord is about completion of the work he started in you and he wants to perfect it and he's given us a command be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect so I would like to start the series with saying that it is an expectation of Jesus um, and it's an expectation of other believers such as Paul Paul says I pray that ye be preserved blameless body soul and spirit until the day of the Lord or the coming of the Lord so it's not something that is optional you know, Jesus used to say, you know, Paul used to say, strive for the masteries. And, you know, we need to strive for maturity in Christ Jesus, you know. But forget about the legalistic thing, because as long as we have this flesh, you can never be technically what we call legalistically perfect. But that's not how God's looking at it anyway. God knows what's in your heart. And that's what he's looking at. And that's, that's a place of attitude. That's not a place of legalism. Because if God was going to use legalism as a basis, all of us would be dead. 
So we're not talking about legalism, but we are talking about the type of attitude that will attract his heart. God said that even in the Old Testament, to him will I look. He that's of a broken heart and a contrite spirit I will not despise. Well, that's not strange because in the Beatitudes, Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, you got to be humble, broken. Understand you can't help yourself, only God can. That's what it means to be poor in spirit and blessed are those who mourn. So the thing that attracted the Lord in the Old Testament is the same thing that attracts the Lord in the New Testament, and that is a humility of heart. That is a, a lowliness of mind, a lowliness of heart. So when we talk about being perfected or we talk about perfection, we're not talking about legalism. We're talking about having that attitude in the Lord, in Christ, that is perfect towards him, that heart after him that is perfect towards him. That's what God said about David under the old covenant. You know, said, this man is a man after my own heart who will do all of my will. That's a wonderful statement to say about a person that's not even under the New Testament. So I want you to know God expects, he expects us to walk in completeness, to walk in perfection, to walk in uh, wholeness or being entire, as James said. And I want to <clears throat> divide up uh, this perfection series into, into four parts for now. And I want to talk about the first part, which is probably the most common part. Um, I love Pastor James because Pastor James is so practical. And James says in that great chapter one, he says, uh, you know, blessed, you know, uh, blessed when you are coming to many trials or many difficulties, knowing that the trying of your faith uh, works patience. But let patience have a perfect, perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Okay, now, James is saying here that one of the things that God uses to bring perfection in us is difficulties and challenges that we face, because when patience has a chance, to do its thing in our lives, God can begin to bring that completed work of Christ. And someone said, well, I believe in the complete work of Jesus. Well, from his side, it is complete, but not from your side. So God brings that completed work through tests and difficulties so you can exercise your faith and walk in love at the same time because faith works by love. So taking that, taking that first situation this first situation with James, if you're going through a trial right now, you're going through a difficulty, as you know, my wife and I went through a trial and going through another one, but we're trusting the Lord as we speak. Now, if you want to enter into this completeness, this perfection, the first thing is, is don't get angry or upset if you go through many trials. James says, first of all, count it all joy if you're going through difficulties, but we get upset about it. We get mad about it. We, we're not uh, too happy about our situation. But James is saying kind of no joy. Okay? So first thing we have to do is, if we're in a trial, if we're in a situation that is difficult, the first thing is to change our attitude. Remember we said at first that being perfect is not legalism, but it's an attitude of heart. So the first thing, let's count it all joy. Because just because you're going through a difficulty doesn't mean Jesus isn't worthy. Doesn't mean he's not Lord. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. It just means that this situation is an opportunity for you to glorify God. Now let me say this. The Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. Now if Jesus can learn something, I sure hope you and I can. If Jesus the Christ had to learn obedience through what he suffered. That's right, I use that curse word, suffering. You know, we don't, a lot of us don't think we're supposed to go through nothing. Well, you know, the Bible says Jesus learned through suffering and he learned obedience. Ooh, submission, obedience. There's that theme again. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. So James is saying kind of all joy because God's about to teach you something. James said, count it all joy because you're going through these trials. He's about to perfect something in you. He's about to teach you the ways of God through this difficulty that you're going through. And so you're not to be discouraged. You're not to be uh, uh, angry. You're not to say, oh, God's left me. No, God's perfecting something in you that's going to cause you to be a blessing. Something that Paul says, Paul said that God allows us to go to trials and allows us to be 
discomforted or whatever we're going through so that we can know how to minister to others. This is clearly what James is talking about. You count it all joy because God's bringing out Jesus in you. All right. And I tell you, um, James also says at the close of that great chapter, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, okay, to visit the fatherless and the orphans in their distresses, the widows and the orphans in their distresses, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. I tell you, you talk about summing something up. That's perfect religion. Now it says pure religion and undefiled. So there again, we have that theme of purity or perfection. Pure religion, undefiled. That's complete religion or entire religion. Religion that God looks at and honors is the type that walks in holiness and walks in love. Ooh, come on, I felt that one. Let me tell you something. Let's keep it practical. You know, having good theology is, is okay. And I, I think we should have good theology. But give me transformation anytime. Because transformation means Jesus has worked the work in you of grace. For the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has appeared to us. And it teaches us that we should live soberly, righteously in this present age. And how is God going to do that? going to take you through some difficulties, some challenges, different things. Could be relationships, could be financial, could be a struggle, could be something beyond your control. But he's going to perfect Christ in you. Now, as this particular chapter begins to end, and before we get to that great statement I just mentioned, it says, if any man okay, uh, says that he's religious, or Christian, we'll put it, but doesn't know how to bridle his tongue, this man's religion is in vain. Okay, we're going to talk about that. The perfection that comes through our tongue as it connects to our heart. And anyway, this is Brother Kevin, and it's good to be back. I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.